Matt Yasa here. Welcome back to another Melty Monday. I'll be attempting to demonstrate the mechanical advantage of pulleys today. So I'm heating up a section and pushing inward with both hands, and this is forming up discs. This is the Maria technique. This will be just a quick demo on the smaller tubing to make some more lightweight pulleys. I did this for episode 67, if you're looking for a more detailed example. Here I'm popping some holes between the pulleys, then I'll separate them with flame cuts. I'll swipe some of that extra glass off with a rod to even out the edge. And now here's an important step I skipped in the last pulley video that I wanted to include in this one. Reaming out the inside edge with a brass reamer. That way it's nice and round for the inside tube to rotate on. And so I'm just cutting it apart again, cleaning up the edge, and going in with the brass reamer. So I'll be using the glass stones I made from the last episode. There's a 75 gram, a 100 gram, and one that I'm not quite sure how large it is. But my original pulleys are about 60 grams themselves. And I wasn't sure if that would affect the test. So I wanted to make these extra small and extra light. This is the inside tube. I'm gonna flare the ends out so it'll hold itself in place. I'm checking to make sure it's big enough. Then I'll spin it out the rest of the way and go in with the graphite paddle to make sure it's flat. I'm having some trouble rotating it. We'll just have to rock it back and forth and then go in with the reamer for a flare. And so the more pulleys I use, the more of a mechanical advantage I should achieve. Let's hope they survive the kilning process. They're going in at 1050 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Here they are out of the kiln, about twice as small as my last batch. And so I've been waiting to test the pulleys and weights from the last couple videos. It's not rolling the best. It looks like the outer tube's a little bit too large compared to the inner tube. And so as it sits, its center of mass is a little bit lower than the inner tube, so it needs extra momentum to flip around and start rolling. But now I'll add another pulley and gain some mechanical advantage. And the difference here is that the rope doesn't just go down and connect to the object, but wraps around and comes back up. And so we have twice as much rope we're working with. I'll have to pull the rope twice as far to move the object the same distance, but it'll be twice as easy to pull. As we add more ropes, we begin to divide the weight of the object between them. But then another interesting thing to know is that not only are we moving the rope, but we're moving the pulleys themselves. We're closing the gap between them. And so I added all the pulleys I made and switched over to a horizontal configuration. So pulling it up is real easy. I'm still having a little bit of that rolling issue. I'll have to work that one out later. And so I mark the rope here with a knot at the first pulley. That will help me measure how much rope I pull out. That way I can compare it to how high the object goes. So it has risen one foot in the air and I measured out 7.9 feet of rope, which is about an eight to one ratio. So with eight pulleys, that seems about right. A mechanical advantage of eight to one. Well, I hope you enjoyed that Melty Monday. Please tune in next Fire Friday for an extra fun episode.